Hi, I'm Adam. I'm a program manager on the Xbox Game and Accessibility team. I'm a certified assistive technology professional and I've worked with a lot of gamers with disabilities to figure out the best gaming setup that works for them. And I'm Caitlin. I'm also a program manager on the Xbox Gaming Accessibility team. And my background is actually working as an occupational therapist, so getting to work with players with a wide range of disabilities as well. In this video, we're going to be taking a deep dive look into the Xbox Adaptive Controller's two USB ports and discussing the types of joysticks that can be used with the controller. First, we'll talk about the ports themselves and what they're used for and how they work. Then we'll talk about the joystick options, including how to determine which types of joysticks are compatible with the controller. Joystick form factor options, including the wide variety of joystick shapes, sizes, and methods of activation that may best fit your needs, and where to find those joystick options on the market. Using external joysticks. Let's start with the two USB ports on the right and the left side of the adaptive controller. These are two USB ports that can be used to connect joysticks to, and those joysticks will function like the left and right thumbstick on a controller. When the controller is in its default mapping state, plugging a joystick into the left USB port will make that joystick act like the left thumbstick on a standard controller. And the opposite is true when you plug it into the right USB port. In that case, that joystick will act like the right thumbstick on a standard controller. So before we jump into the different kinds of joysticks that are out there, let's talk about joystick compatibility. It's important to note that not all joysticks out there are going to be compatible with the Xbox Adaptive Controller. So it's really important that you check with the source or the manufacturer that you're acquiring your joystick from first to ensure that the stick does meet the compatibility requirements before you purchase. So in order to be compatible with the adaptive controller, joysticks must use something called a HID gamepad or HID joystick protocol. This basically just means that the device must communicate with the adaptive controller that it is a joystick, as opposed to something like a mouse or a keyboard. Mice and keyboard devices are not supported by the Xbox adaptive controller. Again, only joysticks and gamepads. It's important to note that there are also a lot of devices that might look like a joystick physically, but actually use those mouse or keyboard communication protocols. Those would also not be supported by the adaptive controller. So again, before you purchase, just be sure to reach out to the manufacturer or the source and ask what kind of HID communication protocols that the device uses and ensure that it supports either the HID gamepad or HID joystick. And all of the joystick options that we have provided in our resource links, these are all confirmed as being compatible with the adaptive controller. But if you do come across a new joystick that's not listed on our page and you can't reach out to the manufacturer, you can also always contact our disability answer desk with any questions on joystick compatibility. Next, let's talk about joystick options and how to assess the components of a joystick to determine what might be a good fit for you. By nature, joysticks are traditionally used to control things like character or camera movement on screen. So operating your joystick in a way that provides as much control over joystick movements as possible will be helpful. We've learned so much from our gaming and disability community regarding the unique ways that joysticks can be accessed or operated, including players who are operating joysticks with their mouth, their chin, their feet, and more. So when looking at joystick options, it's best to start by thinking about how you might be operating the joystick based on your needs or preferences. You should ask yourself questions like, what body part do you plan on operating the joystick with? It could be a hand, a foot, mouth, chin, or any body part that works best for you. Joysticks also come in a variety of sizes and strengths needed to move them around. So depending on how you plan on using your joystick, you may also want to think about what sort of movements work best for you. Whether those are large movements with your hands or shoulders or smaller movements like when using a single finger or maybe a toe. So let's explore some options that are available to help spark some ideas in finding the best fit for you. First though, we want to remind you that you can always leverage the standard components on a controller such as this. You can pair it with the Xbox Adaptive Controller in co-pilot mode, and then you can use the thumbsticks on a standard controller but you could also plug in uh, buttons that you may need into the adaptive controller so that you can make a complete controller in that way. 
But we also realized that the thumbstick on our standard controller might not be accessible for all players. So for anyone who is looking to use an external joystick that plugs into the adaptive controller's USB ports, there are, again, quite a few options when it comes to the shape, size, method of activation, and more. So let's take a look. How about we start with taking a look at some of our larger joystick form factor options. So for players who are able to grasp their joystick, uh, one option includes larger flight sticks like this Logitech 3D Pro. It's important to think about, again, the force needed to actually move these larger joysticks around and whether using these larger motions for prolonged periods when playing a game is going to be accessible. On the other hand, we've also gotten a lot of feedback from players that because these larger joysticks do require more force to move, they can be great for players who want to avoid accidental or unintentional movements of their joystick. But aside from the larger flight stick form factor, there are also other joystick options like the Praetorian Optima joystick for the Xbox Adaptive Controller, which comes with a smaller base piece to grip, but it also comes with this spherical grip as well if that is preferred. There are also some fantastic groups in the maker communities who are creating larger base joysticks with a wide array of 3D printed attachments that really allow you to customize the exact shape or size of how the controller can be grasped based on your individual needs. And these have gotten really cool and really diverse. And they can range from things like this U-shaped handle, which is similar to the controls that you see on some power wheelchairs. A lot of players really like the similarity there. But there are also lots of different form factors that can be found that change the entire shape or grasp of the controller itself. So things like these kind of taller, wider bases, as well as spherical grips, um, chin cup mounts, and really anything under the sun that you can think of. For folks who may be interested in using other body parts for smaller or more compact joysticks, there are, again, there are so many options. There are smaller joysticks, like this one here, with a thumbstick about the size of a US quarter coin. It can even be mounted near one's face and then used with their chin. There are also light touch joystick options for players using small finger motions. Another robust option on the market is a device called the quad stick. The device provides users with both a joystick and a way to activate buttons. Players can use the articulating stick as a joystick, but then also the sip and puff into this straw or the ones over here. And a sip can be mapped to one button and a puff can be mapped to another. And if a joystick like the quad stick does have buttons on it, aside from the actual joystick itself, it's important to note that only the first eight buttons on that joystick will be supported by the adaptive controller. So regardless of how many buttons are on the joystick itself, only eight of the buttons will actually work. And which eight of those buttons is actually decided by the manufacturer. So be sure to look into their documentation on the device. What the eight buttons will do by default will depend on which port the joystick is actually plugged into. So if you're taking a joystick like this with buttons and you plug it into the left USB port, the eight buttons will be by default the following assignments. X1, X2, left stick press, left bumper, A, B, view, and menu. And then if you go over to the right stick USB port, the eight buttons will slightly differ in that their default assignments will be the view, menu, right stick press, right bumper, X, Y, X1, and X2 functions. You can then change what these default assignments for the buttons are using the Xbox Accessories app. And we'll deep dive into that process and how to do all of that in our Xbox Accessories app deep dive video. We have three places where we collect joystick options for the adaptive controller. It's there that you can learn all about the different options we've discussed in this video and more. First, there's the Design for Xbox Adaptive Controller Assistive Technology page. This is a great place to start, as the page details joysticks and buttons that we've tested and know work with the adaptive controller. Then there's a comprehensive joystick resource list. There are so many options out there, and we've collected many of them on our resource page. Third, there's the input spec for makers. So if you want to make your own joystick, we publish the Xbox Adaptive Controller Input Device Specification. It's a document that details the technical specifications of the adaptive controller. So makers can follow those specs and make compatible input devices such as joysticks and buttons. 